Hi, this is Adrian Torres of Ascension Soul Coaching. Uh, today, uh, we had a bit of, well actually not today, but this week we had a bit of a uh, cultural issue with, uh, there was a black female in Texas that was shot by a police officer while he was uh, arresting her for her outstanding warrants. Her name is Pamela Turner. Uh, she's 44 years old uh, and she was a mother. Uh, and she was walking in the neighborhood and the police officer said that he knew that she had a lot of outstanding warrants. Uh, and so he stopped her and he tried to arrest her and she fought and then he shot her with a laser or taser actually. And uh, he said it didn't affect her. So someone got this on camera, on their camera phone. Police are upset that they have this video, but you know, if you're gonna do this stuff out in the open, everybody has a cell phone. Well, they caught him uh, when he tased her, and she fell, and then she was she started yelling, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? Something to that effect. And then uh, he uh, got her on the ground, and uh, they were scuffling, of course, as she shouldn't have. Maybe she shouldn't have been scuffling, but she she fought with him a little bit. Um, but she was on the ground, and she was like, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. And then uh, I think she kind of grabbed at him a little bit, and then the police officer kind of stepped backwards, like out of, you know, like off balance from her. And I think she kind of set up a little bit, and he shot her. I think it was three to five shots just off the bat, you know. Um, so there's a lot of outrage in the black community in America right now regarding this because one of the things that happens is that every time, it seems like a lot of the times when blacks get in, come in contact with the police officers and it's not going the officer's way, the black person gets shot um, and killed, you know. No thoughts, no second thoughts about it. The debate is whether she should have resist, uh, resisted arrest. And I think that people are saying that she's had a, couple of issues with the police, um, uh, uh, battery issues with some other person, of course, um, and some other um, um, warrants out for arrest, nothing serious. And they're also saying that she may have had some mental issues, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, uh, I saw the video, and I'll show you a clip of the video. Um, and I think it was obsessed, obsessed, excessive force. I don't believe she should have been shot. If he tased her, he should have tased her the second time. Or he could have called for backup. He could, I mean, at the point where she was on the ground, he could have just, because she had at one point tried to run away from him. Let her go. You know where she lived. The thing is, this cop knew who she was, had said he knew she had outstanding warrants. This is why he was stopping her to arrest her. He could have called for backup. He knew where she lived. She has kids. So, um... There was no reason to kill her, cold-blooded, like that. And when you see the video, you're going to say, yeah, that was kind of cold. And now the police officers are rallying around him or saying that it's because she is resisted arrest and she, the, the taser didn't work and he, I guess he felt threatened. So he shot her five times while she was on the ground. So, you know, a lot of people push back on the Black Lives Matter theme and events and, and, and marches we had a few years ago and uh, and they want to say black all lives matter which of course all lives matters including blacks or black lives matter too the point is it seems as though we get um in proportion a lot more people killed from being stopped by police officers on small stops or arrests than most other uh nationalities in this country. I can't give you a percentage of it, but it's, you see it on the news over and over and over again. And that's why Black Lives Matter started, because they're just, for any reason, trigger happy to kill black people. And I gotta admit, in our community, we were taught always to respect police officers, first of all. But we were also taught that the men and the boys in our community needed to be even more leery and more, you know, cautious around police officers because they were mostly the ones that were going to get gunned down or beaten up or arrested okay just because they're black driving while black walking while black eating while black it doesn't matter right but now it's the kids getting shot it's the females getting shot and then the the, the, the put you know to make it even worse 
you know, the police officers are rallying around each other and protecting them. I know they have a brotherhood. But first, before there's a brotherhood, there's a humanity. Huma humanity says this is not how we treat people. This woman didn't need to, have to die. Frick, he could have just shot her in her leg, shot her in her arm. Where was she going to go? But no, he cold bloodedly shot her right in the chest. You could see, if it was not in the head, it was in the chest area. Boom, 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 boom. Unnecessarily. And thank God somebody got this on video. Camera phone. And they, 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 they um, uploaded it onto social media. The police found out and says, oh, you know, this was a, you know, they shouldn't have done that. This was evasion of privacy. What privacy? You shot a cold blood in the middle of the freaking street in a freaking neighborhood where people were out there talking. You know, and if they hadn't gotten the video, this would have been swept under the rug. She was some deranged woman that deserved it. So I'm glad they got the video. So... I know we've been talking about Meghan Markle and Donald Trump in the past couple of weeks. I mean, a lot of people have been talking about that. And it, it, Meghan Markle is not as important as, say, a Donald Trump because he is ruining this world or this country. However, this hits closer to home because even I was one of those people that thought it was mostly going to be black men. I and mean, people, when I walk down the street, they say, okay, you need to be careful at night. I'm like, no, I know the area. I'm from here. I'm cool. But you don't know. You don't know. Don't worry about the, the, the crazy people who might shoot you or try to rob you or beat you up or whatever. You got the police officers you have to be wary of. They are trigger happy. And there's no, it doesn't have to be that way, especially in this particular case. In a lot of other cases, there's no need to kill people. Shoot the freaking kill is what they do. They don't shoot the maim. They don't shoot the stop. They shoot the kill. And they think they're justified. So I was in town in D.C. this week. And they had the peace officers uh, memorial going on. There's flags, there's half staff. And you know what? We do need police officers. We do need people, need people uh, in our community to help us and protect us and to help figure out when a, a, a wrong has been done. Uh, to, to put people back right to help the victims. I don't don't take me from um, in the wrong way of thinking I don't think we need police officers, but we need police officers who are going to do the right thing, who are trained the right way, who think the right way, and uh, their the, the superiors and the people around them to make sure justice is done for all, not just for the police officers. And that's not even justice. That's just hiding and protecting their brother. Because if it happens to this woman, it can happen to me, my daughter, my friends, anybody doesn't have to be a reason rhyme or logic around it just because you're black they're more trigger happy they think we're more savage we're more mean we're more uh, up to no good right and, and our lives don't matter so black lives do matter they matter just as much as anyone else's life so today i'm going to do a reading on this particular case uh and I, i'm trying to figure out what questions i want i mean I mean, they already said she's not pregnant. She said she was pregnant. She was yelling, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. She wasn't pregnant. I mean, even that should at least slowed him down a little bit and shooting her, but it didn't. She didn't have a gun. She didn't have a weapon, you know? She was on the ground when this happened. But um, I think I just want to know a little bit more, maybe about the police officer. His name is Lieutenant Steve um, Doris out of Texas. And I think they just put him on, um, on leave of absence, uh, suspension or whatever until they figure out what happened. Video shows what happened, but they've got to do it their way. I just want justice to be served in this, situ in this situation. And I want people to change, police officers to we keep asking for the same thing. Can the police officers just get more training, more diversity training, more, more different weapons? To, you can stop people without killing them. And in some cases, maybe they do have to, you know, it, and it happens, but in this case, no. And anybody with, with two eyes could see that this should never have ended up in this lady being shot in any way or fashion. So my reading today is going to be on who is this officer? Miss, tell us a little bit about Lieutenant Steve um, Doris. I'm going to pull one card and it popped out already. <laughs> it already popped out. Now it says goddess. This is the card. Goddess. What does that mean? I don't know. If I'm reading it correctly, it's a female, but he was a male officer. 
you know, usually with goddesses, they, you know, they're powerful, they're feminine. Usually you think of a goddess as someone who's loving and caring, right? Feminine energy, right? But I asked who was Steve, Mr. Mr. Doris, Lieutenant Doris. So something surrounding his personality is going to come out about who he really is. Always does. They're going to try to protect him though. They're going to try to protect him. Maybe he has a God complex. But whatever his personality is in the upcoming weeks, we will figure out, find out more about him because believe you me, a lot of the... Uh, um, a lot of people are upset and I think they're going to want to force the police um, to f dig in to do a, a course, an internal investigation or internal affairs. They're going to look into it. Uh, but the media should be on it and, and we should, our culture, our people and the people, human pe race should be trying to figure out what's going on and try to make this um, situation, um, the, the events of surrounding it come to, to, to light so everybody can get a fair idea of what happened for real the video speaks a lot um, so my question on uh, top of that is you know is the truth about the situation going to be heard and um, are the real facts the true facts about this case going to come out okay. I'm going to pull three Five cards. I'm doing a Lenormand. This is a different type of a Lenormand set. It's called Enchanted Lenormand. You can see that. I pull these cards because they're. I like start pulling diverse um, cards that have a lot of diversity in them. And these two, because it ain't all white. This world ain't all black or brown or melanated, as they call it. Uh, we're one people, one spirit, different facets of us but we keep living our lives as though we're separate and we're not. And I don't know if we're ever going to get to that point until we die and we know that you know, we're all one spirit. You know? and that's the lesson we came on this earth to learn is that we're all one. This love is the way to go. Hate, distrust, jealousy, conflict, racism, classism needs to stop. We, we are a lot of people on face on excuse me Facebook and YouTube and they say a lot of negative things I try to keep it positive I get into the little gossipy section sometimes myself but I try to lift myself back out um, people want to know inquiring minds want to know I grew up on with the inquire and the star magazines I overseas I guess it would be like the Sun tabloids or whatever but over here we I asked the mentality and you got all these other television shows so you kind of get kind of pulled in sometimes into those uh, gossipy type of stories and you want to read on them right and but this isn't gossip here this is real life this is things that have to change in this community in this world and it starts with each of us i can admit when i'm wrong i can admit when i've done things wrong or said things wrong or read something for amusement that may to the you know someone else's life that's going through something and maybe i shouldn't um but a lot of times i try to read because somebody's asking a question or there's a big push for answers to something or there's a lot of conflict in something and I read on it um, like this particular case but it's this one is affecting me because I'm black you know I'm African-American and I call myself melanated now I don't even call myself African-American anymore I'm just melanated I have darker skin and that's all I have everything else is the same as anyone else I have the same blood as anyone else I breathe the same air as anyone else you know we're all gonna you know, on this earth at the same time we're gonna die you know, all of us are going to die. So it's how you live your life. How you help other people. You know, not hurt other people with our words and our thoughts that are just negative. And it's karma. Because things like that come back around. And we have to start giving out more love. And start one day at a time. Just putting out good thoughts to everybody in the morning. And us understanding that we're all alike. So I've got five cards. Hold on. And I'm going to read them. 
The first one is the tree. This is the Norman card, so you know. The second one is the tower. Third one is ship. Fourth one is mice. And the fifth one is it's the star. Star. All right, so I'm going to read them. I placed them backwards. Okay. So I asked, was this truth of the story going to come out? Well, we have the tree. The tree is about health. It's about family. It's about stability. All right. Heritage. We're talking about the black culture. And in, in, in history of America, how they treat blacks in America. We have the tower. Well, in the Norman, the tower is not the same as in the tarot. The tower is, could be a structure, could be organization, could be big buildings, could be a company. But I'm going to read it as organization. Like an organi organization, like, say, let's say the police department, yeah? The organization, government. Uh, the ship is like a voyage, going somewhere, moving on, taking a journey. Ooh. That flip right out of my hand. The journey. Then we have the mice. Mice is usually like um, something being eaten away. Right. Little thieves, little crooks. <laughs> That's what they do. They steal from you in the middle of the night and leave little droppings. <laughs> and then you have the star, which in this I see this as like this is your wish come true. Your aspirations and dreams coming true. So our country is steeped of a lot of history with the government and with the establishment white establishment people who run this country this is our culture that we're talking about this is these things are deep rooted the rules of the country racism classism um, you know it's all rooted heavily deeply within our country you know bigotry all that is and you know with this ship maybe it's time for things to be leaving like I'm looking at this as though the ship is a taking a trip it's a journey it's, it's a journey it's been a journey and it's eaten away at our culture it's eaten away at the people it's eaten away and maybe it's time for things to move on little by little things to nibble away uh, to move to go away to 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 exit to move but it's taking time. And at the end of the day, I do think that the, the story of what happened to this lady is going to come to come to light. Because people are getting tired of seeing over and over and over and over again this happen in our communities where uh, people get shot and killed. They don't get shot and just hurt. They get shot and killed. And then people cover it up. And it's been deep rooted in our society that this is how they do it. Jim Crow. I live in the South. I live, uh, in, I live, well, I was raised in Virginia. I read, and I still live in Virginia, but I'm in Northern Virginia. But, uh, you know, below the Mason Dixie line, you know, Jim Crow in the 50s and the 60s. And before, um, especially after um, slavery ended, black people were treated horrible. They were treated bad when they were slaves. And then they, they were just treated like, still no second class citizens I mean I don't even want to say second class maybe third or fourth class citizens uh, during the, the Jim Crow era in the, um, in the deep south I mean you can get hanged for anything for looking at somebody the wrong way they would just say this person did this a white person could say you did something and they believed them it didn't matter if it was true or not it's like so we're going through this stuff here with people getting shot it's no better it's, it's, it's deep rooted in our country so what this is saying, but it's saying things are starting to change and move. Little by little, every incident is making things, is eating away at this 
this this tree, this these roots. It's taking time, but at the end of the day, yes, the story will come out. The truth will be told, and they were gonna, and they're gonna have to deal with it. That is my prediction. And you know, sometimes God can use the littlest person. When I say little, like, or the most you would think the most insignificant person to make the biggest change or to promote the biggest change in our world. We had Martin Luther King, and we had Nigger Evers, and we had a lot of great, you know, Malcolm X. We had a lot of great activists, black activists in the 70s and the 60s. Um, we have a few people left now who are trying to make positive change. We had a black, we had a black president, biracial, but black president, President Obama. That's the little by little by little by little, because over 400, 200 years of slavery and how many more years on top of that of discrimination, prejudice, bigotry, it's just beating us down. And we're slowly trying to climb out of that mindset. It's not, you know, it's not even just what they do to us. It's about how we think about us, you know, and we think that we're in this hole and can't get out. It's a struggle. And we have to change our mindset. Technically, we have to change our mindset that we are equal. We are not any less than anyone else and we need to act accordingly. We have the strength and the power to make changes and we need to just to get together and organize to make it happen. Not take money and get in front of the cameras just to talk, but to really make change. And to stand behind the people who are making change for good. You know, this is a great platform to be talking about doing this next election. It's coming up in 2020. Trump doesn't care about us. Trump is, he's all about himself and, and the money he can make. And it's probably this trade war with China is the same thing. He's just throwing a lot of crap in the air to uh, lower the rate, lower the stock market so he and his cronies can go in and buy stocks at a cheap price. And then six months from now or a year from now, they can go back and sell it for a higher price because the stock's going to rise again. It's a game, right? But people on our level, when I say our level, not in the government, um, on the ground, foot soldiers, we need to get together, and organize, and make a change and pressure the police department, pressure this government to hear us and to make changes about who's in these departments, these police officers, law enforcement agencies that are prejudiced, who are bigots, and who do not care if they pull the trigger or not because they know the people behind them, their brotherhood, is going to take care of them. And I'm not saying that the that they shouldn't have a brotherhood. They should have a brotherhood that's based in integrity, though. Uh, I know when you go to war and you're out there fighting battles, you want somebody on your back that's going to help you and be there for you. But you got to, how do you protect somebody who's beating up on somebody else? Who's killing other people unrighteously? They're just doing it and think they can get away with it. Maybe they're sorry they did it. Maybe this guy's going to be sorry he did what he did. But this girl is gone. This lady's gone. And she's not coming back. a life because you're police officers and give you a right to just take a life arbitrarily and then just write it off you should be held accountable when you shoot somebody and you kill them it shouldn't just be oh i'm gonna go to get your rod right or your gun and and then we'll just cover it up for you put you back on the police force there's something wrong with you if you shoot somebody like you just shot that lady sorry there is mentally something wrong with you and especially if you can walk away and not have any real guilt behind it I'm going to read about this person. I'm going to read a little bit more about his police station, where he's in his, his, his supervisors, police chief. Where are they standing? Will they help unite and strengthen this country? their state, their city, their that neighborhood, how are they going to help? And I'm kind of reading slow today because I'm just really upset. I am. I mean, it really hit me today that it's not just our men that can be shot and killed. It can be any of us. Some people don't, they got a gun and they don't care about it. Gun happy, trigger happy, prejudice. Some, there are some good cops out there, don't get me wrong, they are. I've met some. i met some really good cops. I have. I won't tell you why, but anyway, but, um, but it's probably a lot more that don't care, a lot more that, are, that 
are racist. A lot more of them make mistakes and then they get them covered up, which makes it all bad. I mean, they may be good people at heart and then they get it covered up and no one's held accountable for it. How about that? Just got to do something about this. Okay, so we're going to read about his supervisors in general. Are they going to help fix this? Are they going to... How are they going to play in this situation of resolving these issues? Are they going to be transparent? Or are they going to try to hide? Because at the end of the day, we already read it, that the truth is going to come out. But let's see how they're going to play in this role. All right. Two. And I need one more. Sorry, I'm scratching my nose. Just itch. I don't know why. Okay, but anyway. One more card. And it just popped out. So first card is confront. Ooh, scary card, huh? Second card is liberation. Did you see that? And the third card ooh, is regret. Wow. These are oracle cards. Okay. And um They're called a haunted oracle or something like that. I don't have the name of the box. But anyway. So. They're going to be confronted. The police station, the police chief, and his elder, his senior staff or leaders will be confronted. There's going to be liberation. Somebody's going to be, now I'm not saying he's going to be free, this guy. I'm just saying that liberations like freedom, freedom of information, maybe they're going to help. Maybe they're going to, someone's going to speak up and they're going to help out. They're not going to continue to allow this to go down this path that this officer gets off. And then there's going to be some regret and they're going to show regret. And I think that officer does have some regret about what happened. They're gonna they they are they're, they're gonna be reviewed internal investigation of course but there's gonna be a lot of investigations um on that unit and police department there'll be a liberate look this is interesting I mean it may be coincidental I don't know but you see the person in white. Remember the Ku Klux Klan with the white, the white hood. It's a haunted terror, or a haunted oracle, or something like that. But there's going to be a liberation. Someone's going to break free. Information might break free. Um, and then there's going to be regret, and they're going to express regret about what happened. So I think this guy is going to be held accountable for what he did. I don't think, I think if he regrets and he comes out and says he regrets, I know they usually shut you up, they don't let you talk until they do the investigation on that. I think this person, well I said before he, he felt he was a goddess. He's God with the gun, right? But I think he does, the unit he's working with, feel regret about what happened. And they're going to be confronted and they're going to be pressured to do something about it. I don't know if... I'm not saying that he has regret. Yeah, this person has a sheet on too. Why? Um, but I think there's going to be regret expressed within the unit. And from the city of Texas, uh, state of Texas, city of, you got what happened. Um, the city is going to express their regret of what happened. And I think she's going to, family's going to get reparations. Uh -huh, reparations. I know we all talk about reparations for blacks in America for this. And it's going to be settled out of court. I don't think he's going to go to court as far as um, him being charged with anything. But I think there will be a settlement with her family and the state. Um, and the people will know 
the community will know because they're going to play a hand, the black community, the African American community, and other people who support the black community black American um, community in this situation could be other whites or whatever, it doesn't matter, Americans who support and back this particular um, uh, protest or events or marches or whatever, um, or seeking justice, um, they're going to know about it and they're going to take pride in knowing that they were um, um, a part of this turning of the tides. But I think it's just going to be the first step in a lot of changes in America is regarding how police officers treat blacks or other melanated groups um, or even poor class, people who are poor class. They don't have to be black. They don't have to be melanated. It could be white. It could be whatever, right? It could be Asians, whatever, how they treat that group. Not saying that we're always perfect. Not saying that um, uh, some people deserve to be in jail or be arrested or whatever I'm just saying that this lady was not and we see too many, many too many cases where they're not doing anything yes they may be a risk a resisting arrest some of them because it's uncomfortable to be arrested it's uncomfortable to be walking on the street and somebody grab you and want to put you in jail first you don't know why I mean, she maybe she knew but it, it's just the way it was done I mean I know they practice for this stuff and they train for this stuff but it's like their excuses is that it just happened it just happened they come on y'all were trained Y'all were trained, and you know it. You have to understand that once in the blue moon something happened. But we've seen too many cases on camera where people were actually like, that should never have happened. You were gun happy, trigger happy, and you killed that person because, you know, or the story was hidden. You did it, maybe it was an accident, and then the story was hidden, and you got off scot-free. So no, <clears throat> too many of those cases. Either the cops are not training you right, they're not doing good psychological success, uh, assessments of you before they give you that badge and that gun, or y'all just crooked. So, which one is it? I don't know, but I'm going to do one more reading on this case. What in a year will... The relationship between police officers, these are old cards, <laughs> they're kipper cards, um, it's going to look like in, uh, say, a year from now after this case is settled. Will there be any huge changes in how um, the cops or the police um, or law enforcement, any changes to or any movement towards real changes towards how they are trained, how they're reprimanded for excessive force, how they... Um, deal with society you know how you know how are they are just dealing with us how are they communicating and working with the communities instead of against it you know nobody wants to work with the cops because they don't believe in the cops everybody's shady I'm gonna pull nine cards so it's gonna take me a second to get nine cards out so these are kip cards. If y'all know of any kip cards that have black people on them or diversity with a lot of different ethnic races in them, let me know. I'm trying to buy them um, as many as I can. The cards that have that are multi-ethnic to represent all people, not just one. There's no one race that's superior than the other. As much as people try to tell us they are, and they are not. God knows it. He made us all. But I want cards that represent everybody. I can read for anybody. I can read for anybody anyway, but I want you to see you in the cards. You know what I'm saying? We're all one. But we have so many different colors. Beautiful colors. Black, white, yellow, brown, tan, black, blue. <laughs> blue, black, what is it? That's really dark. We're all beautiful people. And we all need to start treating people like they're beautiful people. Just believe it. Whatever you were taught that people were different from you, there's different mentalities, of course. But people are people. And people, all people have all kinds of problems in their life. Very similar. Some more extreme than others, but we all go through all the gamuts, all the feelings, all the... 
same emotions. We all cry. We all hurt. We all get sleepy. We all get hungry. We all want a better life. I mean, some people just don't know how to get to that better life, but they need a coach like me to help them. But everybody wants a better life than what they already have. They want to continue to reach for the sky and be the best they can be if they know how to get there. They have the mental ability and strength and discipline to get there and envision their life the way they want to, they can get there. And I'm envisioning a better world for America. And John Lennon says, imagine all the people. Listen to that song, why don't you? He had something there. I mean, a lot of us do this. He's not the only one that has preached that philosophy. We just gotta start living it. So my emotions are picking up a little bit better because I am having faith in America and in the world that we will have a better life in the lifetime that we're living right now. So I got the nine cards. I'm going to show you the cards. I'm going to try to tilt this down so you can see them. They'll be upside down to you. But I'm going to try to read them for you. So you got them, you got all of them, okay? So I started at the bottom. The middle one is always the one I start with, but it says, um, this This is in German, people, but it's like, um, this is patience and expectations. This is the middle part that I'm reading for, okay? Patience. So I asked was in a year or so, how is it gonna look with the police department? So. It's going to take patience to get where we want to get to, right? Um, this is an adversity card. Adversity. This card says big hopes. This bottom one is Mature lady, wife. So how I read this is that there's going to there are some adversity. It's going to be adversity. So we wait. This is the, we have to have patience because there's adversity going on and there's big hopes that. Uh, this is a lady waiting patiently by a piano, right? So. The adversity, we have big hopes for people to mature, mentalities to change. This one is rich girl or niece. And this one is prison. See that? Okay. Well, the people that's in the um, upper echelon and I'll say for this whites right not I mean I'm not trying to say that only whites can be rich I'm just saying the people in control which could be all right uh, they're also want change um, with the like there's prison reform there's the way people are treated right and then we have oh, oh court and authority. See that? We have a rich man. And we have occupation. This guy's digging a ditch. Usually when you look at prison, you see people on the chain gang digging the ditches, but I'm just saying, okay? So. The adversity, we're waiting on adversity to there's a, okay, so there's we're waiting on the people in the upper levels in their jobs, the mentality, the training, the change. So there's occupation. I'm going to read this as like the guards, the prison, the prison guards, right? This is occupation. We're waiting for a change in the adversity that the black community have with the people, which is for me the police officers, their job, changes in their job, how they do their job, courts. 
patiently waiting for the court system to change and to mature how they deal with people. Okay. We have the rich man, which is the man in charge. Maybe it's the government, maybe it's a governor, maybe it's a police chief, whatever. Patiently waiting for him to, we have big hopes for. So we're putting a lot of hopes in the people in charge to help us and to help reform the jobs of the police officers who will cause diversity in our neighbor, in our community. That's how I'm reading it. So I think, yes, it will change. There's a lot of expectations and hopes around this, the people in charge changing, making the change, but we need to influence the change. We're gonna have to get people behind us, that's the rich girl, people with money, people with power, people in authority to help make the change in how police officers do their job, how prisons are run. There's a lot, you know, you know there's probably a lot of immature police officers and garden or uh, wardens running the prisons and jails. Right? So we're looking for the change in the courts, in the prisons, in the police officers. And people are hoping right now for a lot of changes. Um, but you don't just need money. Oh, so the rich girl's also a friend. Niece, friend, or daughter. Right? To help persuade us and help us to make change in the police, how police, or the system, or the jail system, or the law enforcement industry, change how police officers do their job. So, uh, I'm going to show you this. So, this is the top card court, right, and authority. Rich man and occupation. So we got to change the courts. We need the people in charge, and we have to influence the people in charge to change the one who have authority to change how police officers do their job. You see that? Isn't that cool? How these cards come out? So in a year from now, I'm going to throw a card about what we must do, our community. The, well, I'm not even going to say the black community. What do people in America, I'm going to stick with America right now, need to do, three cards for clarity, to help foster this change in America with how the police and blacks Melanated people are treated, or lower class people, as they say, are treated. These are three cards that jump right to break out. First one. So I'm going to lift the camera up now. See, I'm going to see this stuff. All right. So these are, if I can get this camera up, I am cards. They're like a tarot deck, too. Um, so I, 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 three cards on how, what we need to do with humanity. People in this world need to do to bring better conditions, better training for police officers, change their mentality and the way they do, how they deal with melanated people, people of lower class, different races, different whatever. They're, they're treated fairly, right? And the first one came out was um, Victorious One. So we've got to change all, all our own way of thinking, right? We need to know that we can win this. We can make the change. It's already done. If we believe it's already done, we don't need to feel like, oh Lord, it's a struggle. Oh Lord, we can't get anything done. Nobody won't listen to us. We got strength in the in the fifties and the sixties when they didn't think that they were going to change Jim Crow laws. They did it. Everything didn't change. And everything wasn't perfect, but they did it. We can vote. We can cross state lines without getting permission. We can marry different races now. We go to the same schools as other races. We don't always have the same footing starting out in life, but we can get there with a lot of determination and commitment and a lot of people supporting us. Things have changed, not the 50s anymore, not the 60s, not even the 70s anymore. So we have to have victorious thinking. Okay?
Okay. Two, it came out Royal Royal Maze. Right? It's I am the master of my destiny. We can figure this stuff out. We're in charge of this. We gotta get together, group together, stay together to make this change. We really do. And then the last one is the thinker, which is I am master error. We need to think things through logically. Climb this ladder strategically to get to the top. We can do this, people. Bit by bit, we can do this. Just gotta stay focused. Know who we are. Know we can do it. Claim it that we can do this. We can make a great change in the way uh, how police officers deal with society. Um, and get the training and the thought processes cleared up. But they don't need to be on that job if they don't. Uh, and then uh, know that we're in control of this situation of our destiny. And that we just have to have clear thinking to get there. So that is my reading for today. Sorry, I was kind of like a little down a little bit. I mean, it's just when you see nobody's safe in this world or you feel for a moment nobody is safe in this world it gets you down but I'm gonna do the thing that it says to do I'm gonna know that I am victorious I am in control I am in control of my destiny our destiny and I'm clear thinking about how I go forth and move forth in this world how I deal with other people how I treat other people how I think of other people and understand that we're all one and the same we all want better life we don't need to go out there hurting people, talking bad about people. Even this uh, cyber bully on Facebook and YouTube need to stop because you get back what you put out. And every time we think something, maybe we need to think twice before we write it. We say a lot of nasty things to people on Facebook that we don't agree with. I have been a party of trying to push my agenda on things that I think, right? But I need to be careful how I say it. I can say the same thing lovingly. And a lot of times people now say nasty things to me on my YouTube channel and I just say I love you back because I do I've been that person I've had bad thoughts about things about other people and I choose not to do that anymore so if you you can leave a comment on my page and if it's um, not too bad not too offensive I'll leave it on there but I'll just say I love you back but if it gets to be outrageous I'm going to delete you so I just have to because I'm not, it's not just about me you're putting that negativity out there on it would be about someone else reading it and I don't want to condone it and I do not want to pass it on and I don't want it on my page what I do want is love, peace you know, we can debate we can, you know, agree or disagree but we're going to do it in a polite manner and that's what I'm projecting and what I'm going to put out there even if I talk about situations and people that you don't like I'm going to read on them and I'm going to tell you what I see but I'm not going to make any judgments about anybody, you know. Um, people are here on this earth for a reason. They have their own life purpose. They have to learn their own lessons. Um, no one's hired any other person. Hopefully we're here to, to say, uh, this person is going through this and let me see how they get through it. Because it could be uh, aspiration or inspiration for me to, so I can get out of a, a hole. Or I know somebody else is going through the same thing and maybe I can see how they're doing it. Or it may spark a conversation for somebody in your 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 life who's going through something even if the other person's not handling it correctly that you see out in public society or celebrities it opens and sparks communication so that you can help that person deal with what they're going through um, I want to make this a positive channel I uh, I I love reading for people I love helping people who are especially going through conflict I like to help people who are seeing conflict around them and, and just give them some reassurance that things are going to be okay so if you want a reading with me, um, you can reach me at ascensionsoulcoaching at gmail.com. Um, you can uh, directly e email me um, at that email address, and I will get back to you. Um, if you have a question or something you want me to read on, uh, if you want to make a donation, that's great, cool. It helps promote this channel. Um, just give me a, a email me that, and I will do a reading or put it in the messages below, comments below. And if I see it, I'll then try to do a reading on it. Um, and this just one person at a time, one moment at a time, to continue to put positivity out in the universe. All right? And make our lives worth living, not just for us, but for others. To help others. To love others. As we would love ourselves. 
and hopefully we are really loving ourselves really good because we deserve it so anyway signing off um the cards don't lie people they do tell the truth and tomorrow there'll be something else to talk about i may not be talking about it but there'll be stuff in the news every day to talk about and when the, and when the emotions and feelings and questions about a certain topic continues to come up for me and it um, and I feel moved to, to do a reading on it, I will. Or if you have a question, like I said before, and you want me to do a reading on it, I will. I will always try to keep it positive. I will read what the what cards say and not put my own feelings into it. Well, I won't put my feelings into the reading. I may put my commentary outside of the reading like I did today. But um, I just want a good dialogue, people. So anyway, signing off, Adrian Torres, Ascension Soul Coaching. I am your soul coach. I will talk to you later. Thank you.